And if you want to see our interview with James Ginger, the independent monitor for the APD reformers, visit us, visit us online at NewMexicoInFocus.org. I'm Gene Grant here at the table with our line opinion panelists. This week, national news outlets have focused on a shooting in San Bernardino, California. Many are talking about the number of mass shootings across the country so far this year and what should happen next. That's a big question that we will come back to in the future, but right now let's take a few minutes to talk about the recent shooting in Colorado Springs, where a gunman killed three and wounded nine at a planned parenthood clinic. In a New Mexico Political Report article, anti-abortion activists went on record decrying the attack and saying their local group Protest ABQ does not promote violence. In an interview with the same article, the director of the New Mexico Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice said that problems arise, quote, when you equate abortion with murder. Now, Tom, there's been some debate over whether Planned Parenthood was the deliberate target of the attack, whether, whether it was or not, doesn't matter. Do you agree with Vicki Coart, president and CEO of Planned Parenthood at Rocky Mountains, who said that toxic public discourse was a factor, and this is something you see all over Facebook mm -hmm. and a lot of different places, Caller Fiorina's taking a lot of heat, mm -hmm. a lot of folks are taking about, let's, let's parse this out, rhetoric versus action. Where do you come down on this? Does it, does it have a direct link in your view? Well, I'm sure that, you know, there are, you know, with all these, you know, horrendous incidents, whether, as you mentioned, the ones in California or the one that uh, occurred up in Colorado, right. um, you, you know, investigators will always look to see what the trigger is. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, the, uh, if there is a, um, a fortunate side to this is that the, the suspect is still living. Right. And so whether, you know, the mental capacity of that person is, is proven to be acceptable for trial is, mm -hmm. is yet to be seen. But but I, I'm not sure. You know, I think that sometimes when you have somebody who's deranged like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're just going to, you know, I don't think it's any one thing that triggers them. I, I think that, you know, whether it's rhetoric or anything else, I think sometimes they're just disturbed people mm -hmm. uh, that are looking to, you know, do something and make, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of negative impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and and this person definitely did. You know, it was a horrible uh, situation yeah. and yeah. Uh, further to, you know, divide. Uh, you know the you know different folks and with different opinions on this very sensitive, very high-profile issue. Mm -hmm. Very much so, Sophie. Mm -hmm. uh, this idea of, of language and, and this has been around for a long time. It's been a long debate about language and what it either does or doesn't, and how it should be either on the individual or the pe person saying the language. How, how do we parse this out? It, it's difficult to pin somebody directly to I, these. I things. mean, I, th I think the truth is that we that we need to look to both, mm -hmm. and we have many examples just in the last century of changes in language helping to foster changes in public opinion. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we see that with the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. We see that with, um, with gay and lesbian marriage. We see that with um, all sorts of changes, and changes mm -hmm. in women's status. As we change our language, we change the way that we discuss topics. We change the way we approach them. And, and I'm going to say this. I believe that the anti-abortion uh, movement understands this and has been working to foster a change in language. We, we see this, frankly, from both sides, mm -hmm. right? We, mm -hmm. The pro-choice, pro-life issue. Um, but the, the uh, anti-choice movement has worked very hard to try and change the language, change the rhetoric around abortion. Their statements about baby killers, their statements about uh, murder, and equating abortion with murder. If, mm -hmm. if it's okay to murder a child, it's okay to murder a doctor or murder, murder a woman, mm -hmm. um, or in this case, innocent bystanders. And so, I mean, I think what we're seeing here is a real effort on both sides to change the language in the hopes of changing attitudes about, mm -hmm. about people. The unfortunate thing is that we do have a group, including a group here in Albuquerque, that has pushed hard to equate uh, to equate a legal medical option for women um, with the murder of doctors, to make mm -hmm. that acceptable in mm -hmm. our community, and it is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, on Didi, on, on this idea of language, what Sophie just reminded me of, do you remember a few years ago, not that long ago, when folks were, 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 were trying to find a way around this idea of calling somebody saying, oh, that's gay. Or that's so gay. Do you, do you remember all that? The, mm -hmm. That was a big thing. There were PSA commercials. The, 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 the massaging of language is always been a difficulty out there. It's always been a, a push and pull thing. But in this culture we have right now, where you can say almost anything via social media or anything, do we need to have some limits here? Do we need, I'm, I'm being a little incendiary, of course, of course but it, do we need something that, that quells language in your view? Well, of course, there's First Amendment uh, considerations, mm -hmm. but 
I think that there's been some change in language, but there hasn't been that much change in the activities mm -hmm. of these anti-abortion groups. Mm -hmm. I mean, we it catches our eye now because people have been killed. Right. But on a daily basis, there is hate mail, there is harassment, there is stalking mm -hmm. of medical providers. And uh, I think there have been 7,000 incidents of violence mm -hmm. Uh, since wow. 1977, according to the National Abortion Rights League. And since the thing about this uh, body parts, there have been 40 instances of arson uh, at or near abortion facilities. So uh, this is going on on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And um, I is, think- Is this insightful language to you? I yes. Mean, does it prove the point yes. that there are It's a toxic incited? environment. Yeah. It's created a to toxic environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been deliberate, I think, on the part of right-wing commentators. And uh, it's, it's, it's working. Mm -hmm. It's working because there are crazy people out there. And they're willing to, to take up uh, some of this Holocaust uh, rhetoric. I mean, we had people in the North Valley come and picketing private homes of doctors with signs that said murderer. And as long as that kind of rhetoric exists, and then you even have the politicians that are, um, you know, justifying, uh, not justifying the violence, but uh, saying that, you know, there's evidence, like I think Ted Cruz said, that this was a, a transgender leftist. Right. Um, that just makes it worse. Uh, that just makes it worse, and it, and it continues this kind of toxic environment. And um, mm -hmm. I, I hope that we can have some rational response rather than continuing this divisive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Daniel, what do you think? <laughs> About is there what? Way, is there a way to, right, there's a big, a big bucket here. Quelling, is there a direct link in your view between incendiary uh, language and action? And if there is, is there anything to be done about it? If there isn't, In this why? case or just in general? In, in, in this case, yeah. Well, in this case, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if there is yet or not. We don't know what this guy's part of. I mean, we don't know if this guy mm -hmm. just lived off the grid and he just decided this was the first target of opportunity that came up, up, upon him. Mm -hmm. Was he hired by someone? We don't know. We don't know this stuff till we... To we we uh, we we talk to them. They find out. They do their investigation. They find out what pushed him to do this. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But you know, if we're going to talk about the incendiary language, it's got to be on both sides of the equation. I mean, when there's videos out there about people selling and harvesting body body parts, there are not videos. There there are videos. That. There are videos of very high-ranking officials of Planned Parenthood that did this. They're talking about that, research. It's not. No, that's that. Thing. But that's that's what that's what that's what. The left likes to say about it. The videos speak for themselves. You should see them. You should watch them. But were, were, I was have. It, were I the think videos not manipulated? Is a good no, I don't think they were manipulated. I think it's not. I think it's. Uh -huh. I think it's disingenuous for the left to say this is a choice. Don't worry about it. Not a problem. It's just. It's a woman's right. And then to be seen undercover talking about how they're harvesting body parts and they're using it for research no. and selling them. And it's. it's, it's, it's is, is that it's, not a little strong? Harvesting body parts. Harvesting their, that's is their a language. kind that's of not language, language. That's their language. That's their language. I seem to remember reading, seeing some very credible evidence some of that stuff was highly manipulated no on that's, that, that's, uh, you know. that's not true gene that's what that's what the left wants to say I that's why everyone watching to go and research this they on should a credible research site, they should look at it on a credible it. site and they will research it, and they have seen it. it's been it's been out in the media i hear it's so, a, we're, we're a bit of a distraction this is, is more about, this is about language is, and how it incites is that, people but this is how it incites people see we like what you're saying i don't think you're meaning to say this what you're saying is that there's almost a de facto Okay. No, I'm not saying there's a de facto because okay. Because there's the I'm left saying that decided we, to do no, something. No, I'm saying what, so we, what, what we've heard, what something. we've heard is we've got a guy that committed a crime mm -hmm. who's wrong for what he did and nobody justifies it. Right. And somehow this has pro pro propelled this story into it's, it's the right wing. It's not true that nobody it's, justifies it's, it. There is a movement, including here in Albuquerque, that's not true. That, that, of people who say the murder, the murder of a child justifies the murder mm -hmm. of a doctor, the murder of a patient. Of course there's, there's a lot people of tweets that say that. Of course there's people who say that, but day, I, we, so, you cannot yeah. defend what these individual people are saying. There's mm -hmm. no credible organization, okay. there's no credible let right me, to let life get, organization let me get, let me get that's Tom saying this stuff. Work back in here. You know, this idea of language and how we how we deal with this, either locally, nationally, whatever the case may be. Um, just a reminder, we had another mass shooting the same day as San Bernardino's we had in Georgia. There was just shootings all over the place. It's mm -hmm. just incredible. Now we have to uh, gun control. We have the president saying he wants to, you know, take another cut at this. We've got some politicians about another cut at this. 
We always do this at this table. After yeah. every incident, is this going to be the moment we can have some idea of gun control and some kind of talk about gun control? Yeah, I remember when uh, Sandy Hook, uh, that tragedy occurred. We mm -hmm. were at this table and yep. we were talking about, is that really going to motivate gun That's control right. and uh, uh, or changes in laws? And short answer is, it's nice to talk about. It's a it's a good soundbite, but right. really, there's no action. You know, it's one of these things that you know the talk about, uh, you know, gun control and things of that nature really comes around these big events. But mm -hmm. after that, the discussion kind of just willows away. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not there needs to be more, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, to the to the point that's been brought up around the table, obviously a lot of very passionate conversations. I would, I would encourage everyone, though, um, not to go into the labeling game of uh, anti this, anti that, pro this, pro that. Um, the, the people who are taking these extreme actions, whether it's as Dan mm -hmm. was talking about mm -hmm. or as Sophie and uh, Didi were talking about, are extremes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're totally extremes. The, the typical, I'm convinced that the typical person uh, in Albuquerque and in the nation is aware of the issue, has formulated an opinion, but is not a radical. Right. You know, they're, they, they'll go to church, uh, they're Christian, they're Muslim, and they have a specific view on this particular uh, uh, topic, a very mm -hmm. divisive topic in mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're not by any means radical because they take it one way or another because they say pro-choice or pro-life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, there's, there's a reasonable conversation that's out there, unfortunately, the reasonable conversation is being overlooked by the uh, national extremism we're seeing on this issue. Well done. Up next, an interview with the owner of Sparkle Maintenance, who talks about his business success and longevity.